Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here is Warlord Games' Santissima Trinidad, a Spanish warship from the late 18th and early 19th centuries. And this is from the Black Seas tabletop game. And it's a 1 to 700 scale cast resin and metal model ship. And this was one of uh, Spain's most powerful ships of the line back in the day. In fact, one of the world's most powerful ships, just because of the uh, ridiculous amount of guns that it actually had for its time. And uh, I don't actually play the game myself, I bought this just as a, uh, just because the model looked really interesting. Thought it'd be a, quite a nice change of pace, be a nice uh, exercise in detail painting. And I've seen some ships, uh, some pictures of the finished ships around and they, uh, yeah, they look uh, really quite impressive once you put everything together. It comes with uh, cardboard sails and plastic rat lines and uh, thread for the rigging. So it should, um, should be quite an interesting build. So let's have a look inside the box. Okay, so this box happened to be packed by Ronnie. So thank you, Ronnie. And we've got a pack of the game cards. So we've got uh, some cardboard printouts for all the different flags you can use. So the main Spanish flags here, some signal flags, and also included some privateer or pirate flags if you want to do a, um, a pirate ship. And on the other side, so we've just got some gaming tokens for playing the tabletop game, and also some cardboard sails and some, some of their rat lines printed on clear acetate. But we'll have a closer look at those in a moment. So getting to the main meat of the pack, we've got... A little bit of black thread for all of the rigging, a bag of pewter pieces, so these are all the masts, lifeboats, anchors, and a stern plate. And the main ship itself, so this is cast in one piece resin. And as you can see, it's uh, looking pretty pretty sharp and detailed. The uh, the guns are probably a little out of scale, but everything has to kind of be scaled up to so you can see it at this scale. And so everything's represented there. The deck panelling there. And the figurehead at the front. Providing lots of nice opportunities for detail painting. And so it's a waterline model. So it'll just sit on the, um, the base there. And yeah, so I'm um, looking pretty good so far. So let's have a closer look at the pewter parts. So we've got various masts here. And being pewter, these are a little bit bent, but they can just be easily bent back into position. And there is quite a lot of uh, flash and um, excess moulded parts, which, are, which should be easy enough to clean off with a knife and a bit of uh, clipping. And so the sails, or the lower sails, are filled up, cast in uh, the pewter, but the rest of the sails will be added on later. Yep, so there's three main masts for this ship. And here's a look at the stern plate. So you've got the lamps, the windows into the Santissima Trinidad nameplate along the bottom there which should uh, be quite a challenge to paint up but we'll see how we go and so we've got little anchors pieces and some auxiliary boats and having a look at these final pieces So here's the uh, rat lines, just printed on this clear acetate here, so I just need to slice those out with a hobby knife and attach those to the masts. And so just uh, the cards and tokens for the, the game itself. And 
and the cardboard sails. So these are already punched out, so you just need to push those out and print it on both sides. There. The instruction sheet. Yeah, so pretty simple construction. And finally the cardboard printed flags. So certainly plenty of them. So they're um, for different types of ships. So you've got brigs, frigate and first rate. So it looks like I'll just be using these flags at the top here. Alrighty, so let's get building. Alright, so first I'm just going to separate all of the excess parts from these pewter pieces, just using my side cutters. Should make short work of this soft metal. So this may seem like a bit of a strange subject matter for this channel. But it's just something that I came across while browsing the internet for models one day. And the fact that they were, um, all the ships in this line are 1 to 700 scale, just kind of helps seal the deal because it just happens to be the same scale as a lot of modern uh, warship kits, especially aircraft carriers, which I previously did last year, the uh, USS Essex. So I thought it'd be really interesting to put them side to side and just see the scale difference, well, the size difference being the same scale. And I've always kind of had a passing interest in um, old empires, especially the Spanish Empire, the British Empire, from the Golden Age of Sail, Age of Pirates. And um, yeah, I remember way back, me and my brother as kids, building pirate ships out of Lego. So it always kind of has that nostalgic feel for me. But um, yeah, I just thought these looked like really interesting little kits to build up. I don't actually play the game again like my Star Wars Legion build that I previously did. I'm more interested in the models really than the um, actual playing the game. So uh, we'll see how this one goes and then I've certainly got my eye on more Black Seas kits. So I thought it would be kind of neat just to have a tiny little naval force of um, sailing ships. You've got to be careful. I almost clipped that off, but actually need that part. It's part of the rudder, I think. A lot of these parts seem to have excess material that is actually part of the mould, so it's kind of tricky to tell the difference sometimes. So hopefully I've not screwed it up so far. There's a couple of little bits here, but I might clip those off when I need them so I don't lose them. And so I think this is all the excess. I've got the... um. This is either the boom or the gaff, the two poles that stick out the back. So that's those two there. Right, so that's all of the um, stuff I don't need. This is all the stuff I do need. Now just using hobby knife just to clean up some of these mold lines. And finally just cleaning up some of the edges just with a small metal file. Alright, so that's everything cleaned up and I've straightened the masts out as much as I can, but I think some of them still need a little bit of adjusting. But for now I'm just going to start putting together some of the main bits, so I'm going to attach the back of the stern here, and to glue them together I'm just going to use a super glue, since I'm gluing metal to resin, so plastic glue obviously won't work. And I have um, test fitted this and there is a bit of Bit of a gap. 
behind these pieces, but I should be able to fix that with a bit of filler. So as you can see there, there's quite a bit of a gap there. Okay, so to fill in the gap between these two pieces, I'm just going to use a little bit of Vallejo plastic putty. Now one of the good things about this Vallejo plastic putty is that it dries quite soft so I can just come back with a toothpick and just scrape away the excess without too much trouble. Just cleaning this up a little bit. Alright so with that filled in and cleaned up it's now time to glue on all of the rest of the pieces. Right, so that's all the construction complete. And one of the good things about these masts being pewter is that um, although they're super glued at the base, they're just bendy enough just to let you straighten them up next to each other, just in case they're a little bit bent. So that's everything lined up and in place. And the only thing left over are just these two little pieces here. Um, that in the instructions show you them attaching to the front of the forecastle, but I'm not exactly sure where exactly they attach to or what orientation they're supposed to go because they're slightly bent on one side and it's not helped by the fact that uh, the photos of the completed model you can't actually see them at all especially on the front corner there so yeah, I'm just going to leave them off for now and if I discover where they go later on then I can always attach them and just paint them up but I think uh, yeah, I'll just leave them off, and there's also a couple of spare boats, but not too worried about those. So the next step is to prime it all up and get ready for painting. And for the primer, I'll just be using Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer from a can. Alright, so to start off with, I'm just going to uh, paint up the deck. And for that, I'm using Vallejo Model Air Wood Colour 
71077. And I'm just going to apply thin coats to start off with. And you might be thinking that this would probably be easier to paint without all these masks in the way. And you may be right. I probably should have added them after painting. But I think it's still manageable. I'm also painting up the masts with the same colour. And now for the deep red panels down the side of the hull, I'm going to use a Citadel paint base corn red. Now for the lower part of the hull, I'm using Vallejo Model Air German Red Brown 71271. And now for all of the black panels and the rigging and the lookouts, I'm just going to use Citadel Abaddon Black. Alright, so here's my progress after three nights of detailed and tedious painting. Uh, there's 140 cannons in total, so painting each one of those up and all the gun ports. The red and black stripes, and often the paint would spill over to the other colour, so there's a lot of touch-up work, as you can imagine. So, uh, yeah, that was quite, quite a chore, but I think I'm pretty much done for the port and starboard side. And while I had the black going, I just painted up the anchors. Uh, parts of the masts you can see there. Also the cannons on the deck. Uh, just all in one go and the uh, base of the cannon I just used the dark brown that I used for the main hull, lower hull. And I've just painted up the front of the bow there just 
the same colour brown just to uh, get it ready for more detailed painting which will be worked on in a later stage. Also I still need to detail up the stern and also parts of the deck so the boats and other bits and pieces. Still need a lot more detail work but I've kind of finished the bulk of the main exterior of the ship which I'm pretty happy with. Um, and yeah, so I think what I'm going to do next is paint up the sails. And for that I'm going to start off with Citadel's Ushabti Bone, which is just a nice light pale tan colour, which will hopefully match the cardboard sails that the kit has provided. So yeah, I uh, fully admit that this would have been a lot easier to paint without the masts glued in, especially the deck and all the cannons on the top. Those damn masts just keep getting in the way, so definitely a thing to uh, remember for next time. I was just so keen to get it all together and see it all built up before I started painting that I didn't really, really worry too much about how it would impedes the painting process, but I guess that's uh, one of those lessons. And I actually bought this uh, Centesima Trinidad without actually realising that um, this was one of the most heavily armed first-rate ships of its time. Well, probably in the whole Age of Sail. I think this was one of the only four decked ships that was ever made. So I just had to go and pick the one with the most amount of cannons to build up. So uh, yeah, you might as well start back I suppose. you got to love the Spanish for naming one of their most powerful warships after the Holy Trinity. And now for the decoration around the back of the ship, I'm just going to use a base layer of Citadel Base Corax White. Now I'm going to add some blue highlights using Citadel Colorador Sky.
Now I'm going to do a little bit of gold highlighting using Citadel Auric Armor Gold. Okay, so before painting some of this detail gold over the blue, I'm just going to go over with white, just to give the gold more of a chance to uh, stand out against the blue. So for the name itself, I've just got the white paint on the end of a very small flat brush and I'm just going to try and dry brush that over the raised detail. So I won't need to be too worried about painting the right letters. And now with the white dry, I'm just going to brush over with the gold. All right, so uh, I added a few red highlights on the back of the stern there to go with the gold nameplate. And so I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do as far as all the um, detailed painting goes. Everything's painted up and I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far. So what I'm going to do next is start applying some washes. And I've got a couple of washes so I'm just going to use Citadel Null Oil and I've also got um, Shade Seraphim Sepia. So I'll give those two a go and see how it comes out. So starting with the sepia, I'm just going to apply it to the boats. Just to add to the, the woody flavour and to bring out some of that detail. So I think for the uh, decking itself, I think this might be a little too close in colour. Although, no, it's actually coming out quite, a, quite well. So I'm just going to apply that to the whole deck. And now for some of the details like the grating, I'm going to uh, just apply the non-oil.
Now with everything painted, I'm going to give it a coat of Tamiya TS-80 Flat Clear to protect all of the paint, and then I can move on to the rigging. Right, so that's the flat coat gone down. Now it's time for the rigging, but there is a slight problem with that process, and that is there isn't actually any instructions for how to rig up this particular ship. Now the box didn't come with any, and I do have some basic rigging instructions that come with the, um, the Black Seas Master and Commander starter set. So this is the, um, the rule book, and it shows you how to rig up a frigate, I believe this is, which is not quite the size of a first-rate ship. And because most of the um, ships that come with the set are all plastic injection moulded, they actually come moulded with these holes in the side of the hull which you attach the um, thread that they provide through those holes to help rig up the ship. However, the uh, the resin versions of the first rate ships don't actually have those holes. So I'm just going to um, have to drill those out manually. And so I've got a Dremel, and I think it's a 0.5mm drill bit, and I've drilled out a back hole here on both sides. So that'll go for the... Um, the uh, the hole at the back. Now I just need to make four more holes along the side there. Two on each side. So hopefully I don't screw this up. So the next one needs to be around about here I think. I was just judging where to put them both on the same side. So I think between these two cannons Makes sense. And there. And the last one needs to go behind the front mast, and I'll put that in here, just before the anchor. Alright, so that's the three holes drilled on each side, so I've got one there, one here, and one here. And I'm just now going to just touch up those little bits with some paint, just so they're not so obvious. And then we can start on the rigging. So for the rigging step, it basically just involves taking this fine black cotton thread and just wrapping it around the masts in various uh, places on the hull, just to simulate the main rigging that holds up all of the masts. So um, there's going to be two ways I'm going to secure the thread, and that's just by wrapping it around and tying it up. And also I'll be using little dabs of superglue to fix it in place. Yeah, and I've just got my cutters to cut the thread back to length. And hopefully it all works out. So it's going to be extremely fiddly, precise work. So I don't think I'm going to be able to film a lot of it because um, this uh, phone is kind of in the way of a lot of that fiddly work so I'll try and film as much as I can but I'll just pop in now and again just to show you parts that I've just completed and so hopefully you can see it build up from this to a fully rigged ship. So here's the first step completed so I've got a single thread that's wrapped around the midmast coming down to the bowsprit and the foremast and then a single thread that's just looped to the mizzen and the mainmast there. So now I just need to trim these back. Oh, so they were looped and tied and then secured with a little dab of super glue. So I'm just going to clip away the excess thread. And I can get on to step two. One of the big challenges is just making sure the thread is tight between the, t between the masts. Now there is still quite a bit of give on these masts just because they're pewter and they move quite easily so that could be a, 
a solution to tightening up the threads, but it also could also be a problem where if I accidentally knock it or move it, move it out of place, this thread here will become instantly slack. So it's going to be um, it's going to be tricky keeping everything in line, but hopefully I'll get through it. Yeah, so here's all of the rigging complete. I uh, really did try my best to uh, keep everything tight and straight as possible, but uh, inevitably some of them just went a little bit slack just due to the how the thread was coiled and, and it even uh, pulled straight. Sometimes it didn't really go as uh, straight as I would like. So yeah, I tried my best, but uh, I'm overall I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Everything's nice and secure. So if you see if you can, I can pull on the back mast there and it sort of tightens everything, but it doesn't stay like that. It's kind of pulled back by all of their various threads pulling it in different directions. And yeah, I'd say the uh, trickiest part by far was winding the thread around these front pieces here. There just wasn't enough for it to grab on, especially on that side there. So I just had to pull back on the thread and then just get my girlfriend to dab some glue and then just had to pull on it until it was set. Because if, as soon as I let go it just uh, unwound itself. But everything else I managed to do by myself. Um, yeah, if you do it step by step and take your time, it's certainly achievable. But for me, there was a lots of repeated attempts and a lot of swearing. There were some really tricky and fiddly bits. But um, it's certainly not put me off doing doing it again for the next ship. All right, so the next step is to attach all of the sails. Alright, so I think I'm going to start with the mizzen first, punch out these pre-cut sails. So for example, here's the, uh, the main sail there and that will just slot into there. But I think uh, for a bit of extra realism, I'm going to need to curve this a little bit so it looks like the uh, the wind is pushing on it. I might just get something nice and round to bend that around. Alright, so I'm going to start off using a bit of uh, PVA white glue. Uh, because this dries clear and it's got a long set time so I can sort of position them in place once this on the, um, the mast and hopefully it's got enough sticking power to keep the sail there while it's drying but I'm just going to get a little bit on the end of a cocktail stick and I'm just going to run it across the top of the sail
Alrighty, so there's all of the sails done, and they went down without too much trouble. It was a lot easier than I thought, uh, attaching some of them, especially the, uh, the front ones here with the uh, white glue. It seemed to stick pretty nicely, and it didn't take long to dry. So now the next step is to attach all of these lovely flags. So unlike the sails, these aren't pre-cut unfortunately, so I'm just going to have to carefully slice them out by hand. And I'll start with the main Spanish flag. So of course uh, cutting out these cardboard flags has left a little bit of a white exposed paper area on the edges. So I'm just going to cover that up with just a little bit of red paint. And now with the flags on, the uh, final step is to attach the red lines. All right, so there she is, all finished up, ready to take to the high seas and do glorious battle for the Spanish Empire. And uh, I did add an extra flag to the mizzen there at the back. Just uh, I didn't think the ship looked Spanish enough, so I just made it a bit more flaggy. And yeah, I'm uh, really happy with how the finished uh, ship has come out. I think I did make a little bit of a mistake here uh, with this sail at the... Um, the top should have been a bit lower down, looking at a, a few reference pictures. And I'm kind of too scared to pull it off the um, the thread, even though it is just white glue. It would come off, but I'm afraid it'll mess up the thread, so I'll just leave it as it is and fix that up for the next ship I build. So um, yeah, I've got the, uh, the playmat from the starter set, so I do have some other ships ready to build up. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get stuck into those. Um, I certainly learnt a lot about um, tall ships and old 18th century sailing vessels, just researching and reading up the uh, starter guide and all of that for all the different names of parts of the ships. I still don't know it off by heart, but um, yeah, it was definitely a nice learning experience as well as a quite a fun little piece to build up. 
Um, I'd say that adding the cardboard sails and the plastic rat lines does kind of take away the realism from what I had before when it was just the masts and the rigging. But um, bear in mind this is supposed to be a wargaming piece as well as a miniature model, so there has to be a compromise between um, ease of building, playability and uh, accuracy. So I don't really mind the finished result. It's certainly a, a simpler solution than trying to use cloth for the sails or rigging up the rat lines from thread. Would have been a nightmare. But I'm sure it is possible. Maybe it's something I'll uh, have a go at at a later stage. And as always, I'm keen to know what you think of the final result. I'll be putting up photos across my various social networks, so you can go check those out in closer detail. And um, yeah, I look forward to reading your feedback. And if you're interested in seeing more of these videos, then please remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next exciting miniature build. I definitely will be doing more of these ships in the future. Can't exactly say when, my backlog is absolutely huge at the moment, but I'm sure I'll get around to them eventually. So just taking a closer look at some of the detail. Got the anchors, the boats, the two ship bells actually. Um, there's a bell here and another bell right there. And various other details like steps down to the lower decks. The uh, ship's wheel is actually, um, if I can get my sword in there, it's actually back there, just under this beam there. You can just kind of make out the wheel. And just taking a close look at the figurehead, which I'm pretty sure is a lion with the crown or a little castle on top of his head, which I'm guessing represents uh, Castile and Leon, which is one of the major kingdoms of old Spain. And just another close look at the stern of the name detail. And if you've made it this far through the video, then a big thanks for watching. I know this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual, just because I didn't want to cut out too many steps of the build process. I thought it was uh, quite interesting from start to finish. And I hope you've enjoyed. So until next time, thanks again for watching, and hard to starboard. As a consumer, the shops are quite powerful, and I like that because I'm on my own.